revising the history of big climate-altering volcanic eruptions. This is on What's Up With That by Anthony Watts, and it was uh, posted a few days ago. It was originally on Nature, published by uh, Euro Eureka Alert, February 5th. New method, co-developed at UMD, refines that 2,600-year history, which is pretty recent, of large eruptions that inject planet-cooling particles into the stratosphere. Of course, we're talking about volcanic gas. This is from the University of Maryland, UMD. For all their destructive power, most volcanic eruptions are local events. Lava flows tend to reach only a few miles at most, while airborne ash and soot travel a little farther. But occasionally, large eruptions can launch particles into the stratosphere more than six miles above the Earth's surface. In 1991, eruption of Mount Pinatumbo in the Philippines, the world's largest eruption in the past 100 years, is a prime example of a stratospheric eruption. When volcanic particles reach the stratosphere, they stay aloft for a long time, reflecting sunlight and temporarily cooling the planet. By understanding the history of these big eruptions, researchers can begin to place short cooling episodes and other discrete climate events into a context of large-scale climate patterns. Researchers working at the University of Maryland and University of Grenoble in the Alps in France and Ecole Normale Supérieure in France and Tokyo Institute of Technology. They all came together and devised a new, more accurate system for identifying large stratospheric eruptions recorded in the layers of Antarctic ice cores. Using their method, the researchers made some important revisions to the known history of big eruptions. They corrected the record on several misidentified events while discovering a few as yet unknown stratospheric eruptions. The researchers described their approach, which identifies airborne volcanic particles with a specific chemical signature in a paper published January 28, 2019 in the journal Nature Communications. Quote, I find it very exciting that we're able to use chemical signals to build a highly accurate record of large climate relevant stratospheric eruptions, end quote, said James Farquhar, a professor of geology at UMD, the co-author of the research paper. Quote, this historical record will be highly useful for climate scientists seeking to understand the role of large eruptions in climate oscillations, but there's also the basic marvel of reading a chemical fingerprint that is left behind in the ice, end quote. So they got these records from the ice cores, you see. Uh, eventually, volcanic particles fall from the stratosphere, settling on the ground below, and when they land on the snow, the particles get covered up by more snow that gets compacted into ice. This preserves a record of the eruption that survives until the ice melts. Researchers can drill and retrieve ice cores in places like Antarctica and Greenland, revealing eruption records that stretch back several thousand years. Because particles from large stratospheric eruptions can spread across the globe before falling to the ground, previous methods identified stratospheric eruptions by looking for sulfate particle layers in ice from both hemispheres, usually from Antarctica and Greenland. If the same layers of sulfate showed up in both cores, deposited at the same time in Earth's history, researchers could conclude that the particles came from the same large stratospheric eruption. Quote, for eruptions that are intense enough to inject material into the stratosphere, there is a telltale signature in the sulfur isotope ratios of sulfate preserved in ancient ice layers, end quote, explained Farquhar, who also has a, an appointment at UMD's Earth Science System Science Interdisciplinary Center. Quote, by, in, by instead focusing on this distinct sulfur isotope signature, our new method yielded some surprising and useful results. We found that prior reconstructions missed some stratospheric events and falsely identified others. End quote. The study, lead author Elsa Gautier, 
from University of Grenoble from the Alps, did a significant portion of the analysis at the University of Maryland, while on a Fulbright scholarship to work with Fakuhar in 2013. Following Gautier's lead, the researchers developed their method using ice cores collected at a remote site in Antarctica called Dome C. One of the highest points on the Antarctic ice sheet, Dome C, is home to ice layers that stretch back nearly 50,000 years. Gautier and her colleague, Joel Severino, also at the University of Grenoble at Alps, collected ice cores at Dome C that contain records stretching back roughly 2,600 years, covering a large portion of recorded human history. So that's pretty recent, only 2,600 years back. The researchers used their method to confirm that many events had indeed been properly identified by the older methods of matching up corresponding sulfate layers and ice cores from both hemispheres. But some events, formerly thought to be big stratospheric eruptions, did not have the telltale sulfur isotope signature in their sulfur sulfate layers. Instead, the researchers concluded these layers must have been deposited by two or more smaller volcanoes that erupted about the same time at high altitudes in both hemispheres. The researchers also found some big stratospheric events that contained the isotope signature but were somehow constrained to the southern hemisphere. They didn't cross to the north. Quote, this is the strength of our approach because these events would have a climate impact but are missed by other methods, Fakuhar said. We have made a significant improvement in the reconstruction of large stratospheric eruptions that occurred over the past 2,600 years. This is critically important for understanding the role of volcanic eruptions on climate and possibly for understanding certain events in human history, such as widespread famines. It can also help to inform future climate models that will take large volcanic events into account." End quote. The research paper titled 2,600 Years of Stratospheric Volcanism Throughout Sulfate Isotopes end quote, by Elsa Gautier, Joel Severino, Just Hook, Joseph Erbald, Nicholas Kalon, Shohi Hattori, and other names here published in the journal Nature Communications, January 28, 2019. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.